So yes, so I am Rowena Hundy, the CEO of StarCount, um, and I will be talking to you guys today about psychographic data. Um, at StarCount, we champion something called mindset marketing, which is about using data to understand our emotional drivers of behavior, and then using that to send tailored marketing that reflects what we love and what we care about. Because ultimately, the things that matter to us in our lives, our family, our health, technology, our business, our work, these are the things that drive us in the brands that we choose and the products that we buy. And StarCount have been working across a number of sectors for, uh, for about five, 10 years now. Um, we've worked in luxury, automotive, retail, and we are very excited to be bringing our data to the hospitality industry through our partnership with Data Hawks, um, working with them to enrich our um, hospitality brands, customer data with this psychographic data to ultimately be able to connect emotionally with their customers. So, before I start, I'm going to get you all to stand up, if you may. Stand up, if you're able to. <laughs> and think about when you've been to a restaurant in the last six months. We're back out and about now, we're doing things, we're going out with our friends and family. And I want you to all think about if you've ever ordered a plant-based or vegetarian option. Okay, if you haven't ordered one, please sit down. There we go, there go our carnivores, all right. <laughs> Right, now I want you to think about why you chose your plant-based or vegetarian option, okay? What was your motivation for buying it? Now, can you sit down if it was for animal welfare reasons? Please sit down if you, didn't buy, if you bought your vegetarian option because you care about animals. Okay, how many of you did it for health reasons? Can you sit down if you did it for health or diet reasons? Okay, interesting. And how many of you did it for environmental reasons in terms of protecting the planet? Can you sit down for environmental reasons? Interesting, look at this live segmentation. And I'm running out of reasons, guys. And what about if it was the most delicious option on the menu? Can you sit down if you did it because it was the, okay. <laughs> okay, we've still got some people standing. Can anyone share with me, anyone who's still standing, your reasons for, for going veggie? How about you up there? Oh, you got me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody else? Anyone else still standing? Someone else up here? Yes? You wanted to try something new. Love it. Thank you. Amazing. So thank you all very much for that. I guess what I wanted to show you is that we can all go to the same place. We can all choose the same brand. We can all buy the same product, but we can have different reasons why we're doing it. And as hospitality, you guys are such an exciting industry because you're not only about, you know, share of wallet, how people spend their money, but you're how they spend their time. It's a very emotional industry. You're celebrating with the people that you love and you're using it as a way of enjoying the free time that you've got. So by connecting emotionally, there's a huge advantage, competitive advantage in winning your customers share of wallet and share of time from the, your competitors. So we've spoken a lot about data this morning. It was a fantastic panel. Um, and we talked about what data you guys have on your customers today. You very much have proof of presence. You've got what they buy. You can see the point of sale data, the things they're ordering, the products they're buying, the services they're buying. You know who they are. You have an email address. You have a mobile number. You have your CRM data that allows you to contact them. And that's very actionable. And you have when they're there, the times of days you're busy, um, how long they're spending with you, their footfall, where else they're going. And these are really key data points in understanding who your customers are and what they're doing with you. But there's a gap in why. Why are they choosing you over the, your competitors? Why are they coming into your restaurant, into your brand to spend their time and money? So we've been looking at doing a segmentation for hospitality. What are the different reasons that customers come into different venues and spend time um, and money in your, in your sites? Is it because they're foodies? Are they wanting to spend time there with their family? Is it more about socializing with friends or work? Is it about going in and watching sports, watching the latest match? Um, is it about choosing you because you're the healthy option, the environmental option? Um, are they about discounts? Are they early adopters? Are you the new, the new trending thing? Do they support you because you're local? Do they support you because you play good music? 
All of these reasons are really important in you understanding why your customers are choosing you so you can connect with them with these drivers that are going to ultimately get them to come in and spend time with you. Now, how do we do this <laughs> is probably what you're thinking. So I want you to imagine you've got two customers in your database. You have Melissa and you have Matthew. Um, Melissa and Matthew look really similar to you. Yes, they're a, they're a man and a woman. Um, but they're a similar affluence, brand, uh, affluence band. They're a similar age. They're both 20 to 25 years old. They're a Gen Z. And they're coming into your venues and buying similar pro products. But ultimately, they have very different motivations, very different mindsets. Melissa is all about treating herself, and Matthew prefers nights in. How do we know this? Now, many of you may try and understand why your customers are doing what they're doing. Maybe you run surveys. Maybe you go and spend time in your sites and speak to customers and understand them from, a, from kind of a gut instinct point of view. But the way that we're starting to bring the social and digital data that's available online out of the walled gardens and matching it to your customer data is the, is the technology that we're championing at StarCamp. So I don't know how easily you can see this upstairs and at the back, but the reason that we know that Melissa likes to treat herself is because of the things that she's doing in social and digital. She's following brands like Charlotte Tilbury, Farfetch, Starbucks, Champney Spa, she's eating out on following restaurants like Bluebird, Soho House, Duck and Waffle. She follows brands like Candy Kittens, Green and Blacks, My Protein. She's influenced by celebrities like Emma Louise Connolly, Cara Delevingne, Sophie Habu. And she's reading media like Glamour and Made in Chelsea. From all these things that she's engaging with online, we can start to understand that Melissa loves, she loves eating out, she loves celebrity and entertainment, she likes treating herself to expensive beauty brands, to spa tri treatments, to trips away, to expensive cocktails. These are all things that we can start to see from her online behavior. In contrast, Matthew is all about nights in. We can see that he's following things like Deliveroo and Just Eat, He's uh, following things like Netflix and PlayStation. He loves gaming. He loves watching movies and documentaries. But he is a Gen Z, so he's not, you know, someone who I would typically imagine from my demographic who uh, love gaming and, and staying in. He's very health conscious. He cares about the environment. He tends to eat vegan. All of these triggers we've derived and understood from social and digital, and we're using them combined with transaction data to start to build segments that show us why customers come. And what that means, when you're empowered with this knowledge that Matthew and Melissa have a completely different reason to visiting your venues or to coming to you, then if they've lapsed, if you haven't seen them in six months and you need to get them back in, you want to regain their share of wallet and spend, what can you do? Well, you can send them a campaign that resonates with these emotional drivers. You can send Melissa a campaign through your CRM program that shows, you know, we've got a, a girl there in a very floral, Instagrammable cocktail um, imagery using words like pamper, luxury, treat yourself, enjoy, experience. Whereas Matthew, you're going to send him the fact that he can get his healthy favorite options to enjoy through Deliveroo for a night in with the lads sat on the telly there being healthy, um, watching movies or gaming or watching the latest sports matches. So this is how you keep your customers engaged. This is how you retain them and keep their spend. And if they're lapsed, this is how you bring them back. But what about finding new customers? The great thing about this data is it's obviously social and digital. So you can start to see where the other touch points are for you to reach more customers like them. You know, we can see that Melissa follows a lot of influencers. An influencer strategy to find more Melissas would work really well. You know, by getting Emma Louise Connolly to come into your restaurant, giving her a meal where she posts it on Instagram, suddenly all the Melissas will follow. Whereas with Matthew, he's an online guy. He's spending his time in digital channels. And by understanding his interests, his demographics, the kind of websites he's spending time on, you can do contextual audiences in paid social. You can do display advertising in digital channels and really find more Matthews to promote and use the creative you've built for CRM and apply it to those acquisition channels. Now... I've spoken about this from a customer point of view and speaking to customers and personalizing that journey. 
but we also need to think about sites. Different locations across, different, uh, across the country are obviously incredibly um, different. So I'm going to do the crazy attempt now of doing a live demo. Will you help me? God, everyone wish me luck. <laughs> so what we've done is we've actually matched this social data, this ability to understand the things that people care about, to UK postcodes. Um, I don't know how many of you use Mosaic or Acorn, a geodemographic tool where you can understand Amazing, thank you. When you can understand the demographic makeup of um, your catchment based on the people that live there. But what about the mindset makeup? What do people love and care about in different areas? So what we've been able to do is take the residents of postcodes and actually match what they're following on social media to understand how different postcodes care about different things. Right, this is a real multitask, mouse and microphone. So, and twist. <laughs> so what you can obviously see here is a map of the UK. You can see that we've got 28 million households, 1.7 million postcodes. And you can see that above all, the UK love TV entertainment, comedy, music, pop, sports, news, reality TV, and politics. That probably won't surprise you. But as we start to look at different regions, let's pop out to Cardiff. What do the residents of Cardiff love? They love classical music, they love rugby union, they love rugby league, male grooming, winter sports, and socializing. Let's pop out to Cornwall. What do the residents of Cornwall love? They love ocean conservation, theme parks, water sports, beer and cider, vegetarianism, photography, boats, nature conservation. And my favorite example is even if we pop up north to York, it's tea, spending time outdoors, and talking about the weather. So you can really see how this tool is great for proving regional stereotypes. But how you guys can use it as sites, as venues, is incredibly exciting. Because if I just zoom in and we get a bit more granular on the data, is so I'm going to give you a live example on something we're working on with one of our clients. They have two sites. They have one in Brighton and they have one in Ashford. And these sites weren't performing well and they didn't understand why. So we looked at the catchments and we've helped them think about how can they change their local marketing, but also how can they change the insight experience and format the venue differently to maximize on its success. So their Brighton location is in this postcode sector. And you can see here that the residents nearby care about vegetarianism, so making sure the veggie options are promoted in their local marketing is key. They care about art and design, you know, uh, fine art, they're a creative bunch, and they also care about climate and green issues. So vegetarianism, sustainability, art and design, creativity, creating a space that they can use for that is key to driving the performance of this particular site. Compare that to their Ashford site. These guys care about, well, their family is a high um, young family demographic profile. And you can see that they care about family and parenting in there. So it's no doubt they want energy drinks, wine. Um, but there's also huge interest in gaming. And so creating an environment where families can come with their kids, the parents can join, e enjoy either a glass of wine or an energy drink, and also gamify it both for the kids and the adults. This is something that's going to improve the performance of this store. So you can start to see how this data is key for looking at that success from a local point of view, as well as in our, kind of, in, in our CRM marketing and our paid social and digital. So if I just flip back, am I going here? Is that right? Perfect. Amazing, thank you. Um, so I hope I've shown you that your customers are not all the same. Thank you so much for participating in that live segmentation. I'm glad you didn't all have the same um, motivations. And we've talked about how you can then use this to share, to win their share of wallet and share of time. And it's really important to lead with the why. The clients that we're working with that are leading with this why are seeing huge uplifts in performance. We're consistently driving six times revenue than BAU. And in terms of retention and using it in CRM channels, about a 20% uplift in sales conversion. In acquisition, we're increasing exposure to their audiences based on these mindsets by 35%. 
And we are transforming some of worst performing sites into top performing sites in a really quick turnaround time. So lead with the why, be emotional marketers. Marketing is all about communicating with customers. And ultimately, our emotional drivers are what um, you know, drive us to do the things that we do. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>